The second half of version 4.5 is right around the corner and we are seeing some very juicy 5 stars on that side. Those characters being Otto Dragon Man Nuvillet and our resident Wind Boy Kazuha. Now the real question is, should you pull or should you skip? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and in this video, we will be taking a look at both Nuvillet and Kazuha to see if they are worth your Primo Gems. So as of the time of this recording, the full information of the banner has been out, so do expect a banner review quite soon after this video comes out. Anyways, let us start out with our French Dragon Nuvillet. So Nuvillet is a Hydro 5-star Catalyst user from Fontaine, whose playstyle is mostly an on-field DPS with his charge attack being his main source. His normal attack talent is actually his most important one because that's where his charge attack lies, being his biggest source of damage. On its own, if you perform a charge attack, it takes about 3 seconds to charge up fully, where it unleashes a Hydro Pump in a straight line. And if his HP is above 50%, Nuvillet will continuously lose HP while using his charge attack. So his elemental skill does very simple Hydro damage in a small AoE, but it also creates this thing called the Source Water Droplet. So when Nuvillet charges up his charge attack, he will absorb any droplets in close proximity, making him unleashing the charge attack faster. For every droplet it absorbs, it decreases his charge up time by 1 second. So so absorbing 3 droplets will basically let him do his charge attack almost immediately. His elemental burst does an AoE hydro damage all around him or like wherever he's aiming, of which it will generate 6 droplets which once again you can consume to actually accelerate the charging up of his charge attack. For his ascension 1, whenever anyone in the party triggers a hydro reaction, Nuvolet will gain a stack which increases his charge attack damage with a maximum of 3 stacks. For his ascension 4, he gains a hydro damage bonus for every 1% of current HP he possesses or above the max 30%. Now let's quickly go over his consolation. So his C1 gives him a stack for his Ascension 1 passive whenever he takes field and he also gains additional resistance to interruption. This is actually one of his best consolation because it's actually a good quality of life and damage increase overall. While I do feel like people overhype or overvalue the increased resistance to interruption, this consolation's true value actually comes from the additional stack you gain for his passive. Because usually in the Nuvolet team, you would ideally want to get Furina, so you would run Nuvolet Furina, leaving you with only 2 slots remaining. So if you want to trigger any hydro reactions, you only have like 2 slots left. So at best, let's say you put Fischl for Electro Charge and Kazuha for Anemo Swirl, right? So at best, you're only going to get 2 stacks in that scenario, which means you can't actually get the maximum stack without forcing some sort of weird triple reaction team, which you can't really do because you're going to be putting Furina there anyways. And if you don't have Furina, it's not really worth the damage increase because it, it's like it's going to be very jank for you to do that. Hi, so post-edit ethereal here. Just wanted to clarify that after watching some videos by like uh, Jamie, me with a TGS and also watching the latest us Jeff, you don't actually need Furina to run the best teams because you could even run like Nivellet National. I think that should be his highest uh, output team but by using Vape. Also, you can also run characters like Sucrose or Fischl or Shangling in the team and you should be able to max out the Ascension 1 passive. In this case, what I'm trying to say is that Furina is not a necessary unit for you to get in order to make him do the most damage. On top of that, Nuvolet as a character is very flexible in what teams you're able to run. So if you don't have Furina, don't fret too much about it. You can still run him perfectly fine and he will still work in whatever team that you want to put him into. Anyways, back to the video. However, his C1 allows you to get that third stack, which basically guarantees the damage increase regardless of what team you run. So his C2 increases the crit damage of his charge attack by 14% for every stack he has from his Ascension 1. This is a straightforward damage increase and its value is increased because it works even better with C1. So at minimum, you are going to be getting 14% crit damage for his charge attack regardless of what you do. His Consolation Tree adds 3 levels to his normal attack, which is quite a good damage increase since it actually buffs his charge attack damage. The only other character characters whose constellation actually adds levels to their normal attack talent is Linny and Fremine. So this is actually quite rare and it's been a new thing that Hoyo has been implementing for any normal attack talent based DPS. This constellation would be a good stopping point for any low spenders because spending or going for any constellation past this is mostly like, it's mostly made for C6. So you're better off getting his R1, his best slot weapon for a guaranteed damage increase rather than having to spend the extra money and pre more gems to go all the way. But if you do decide to go all the way, his C4, every time he gets healed, he generates a source water droplet on a 4 second cooldown. This is made to work with C6 so don't stop here, it's not ideal to actually just stop here without going for C6. C5 adds 3 levels to his burst which is a very simple minor damage increase and C6 is what I like to call the forever power washer constellation. During his charge attack, Nivellet will absorb any nearby droplet which extends his charge attack by 1 second and additional currents will fire at the enemy every 2 seconds and it does damage based on 10% of his max HP. This works really well with C4 because it generates a droplet which extends his charge 
project are even longer. It's really hard to quantify the overall damage increase because it's completely dependent on how you want to play your new villain in the team. But regardless, like if your new villain is C6, right, at this point he's going to do so much damage that you may as well, like it doesn't matter what team you run, he's just going to work. He's just going to do a lot of damage unless for some reason you build him wrongly, which I don't think you can really get that. So my thoughts on new villain. I've already made a video before. I actually forgot to check when I'm recording this, but you know, as I've mentioned, he's an amazing unit. His performance quite literally blows you away. No pun intended. Because like the fact that his charge attack, right, can hit enemies within like a rectangular hitbox in front of him and it disregards the collision of the enemy in that sense is actually quite good. So anyone in front of him will just continuously take damage. So that means rather than having to rely on a grouper to group enemies together to do maximum DPS, Nuvillet can actually do that without the need of grouping, water jet everything to oblivion, and he can do so at a comfortable distance, thus minimizing the amount of damage that he takes. Not only that, his damage scales form his HP, and if there is one thing we know about HP scaling characters is that they all hit really hard. Plus, they also gain additional survivability with the absurd amount of HP that they gain due to the, the way that you're going to build them. But what separates Nuvillet from all these other HP scaling DPS like maybe Yelan or Furina is that he has the ability to self-sustain, or in other words, self-healing. Every time he absorbs droplets, he heals a huge chunk of his HP, which quite literally makes him the perfect DPS. And on my Twitch streams, I had the opportunity to try him out on my viewers' account for their Abyss clears, and he's been absolutely amazing. Like the fact that his damage is not reliant on his burst, and the fact that he can self-sustain means he consolidates multiple roles by himself, which essentially means you don't need a healer in your team. He's going to be on field, and he's going to be healing himself most of the time anyways, so you don't even have to care about healing the rest of your teammates, even if you have Furina, because you're going to be maxing out the stack regardless, and if you don't somehow screw up or you don't get staggered while you're doing your rotations, Nuvillet should be able to sustain your team just fine. In terms of damage, well, he does that very, very well. If I remember correctly, he does like 8 hits in a single charge attack, which is quite decent. And what he has over other DPS is Mercy, his AoE. Like I mentioned just now, he's not relying on groupers, can hit multiple enemies to sustain DPS, and his damage is strong enough that he's actually great in both single and multi-target situations, which not a lot of DPS can really do. So we've already covered Nuvulet himself, but what about his teammates? Well, who would have thought that the Hydro Archon would actually be one of his best, or if not his best? support stash teammate. So the Nuvolet Furina combo works so well in any team that you would actually just know that their kit was just straight up made for each other. Furina's burst giving damage percent is, you know, the whole mechanic is that it's reliant on building stacks, which is you gain stacks based on the changes to your HP, like every 1%. So healing is the fastest way to get the maximum value. And because Nuvolet heals so much that he can essentially gain max stacks for Furina's burst without having the need of another healer unit in your team. Plus, this duo in a party of four will give you hard resonance, which actually buffs everyone's HP by 25%, which not only increases the survivability of your entire team, it also buffs both Furina and Nuvolet's damage, since their damage mostly scales off their HP. And since Nuvolet is quite flexible, you can basically slot him in any team with any Hydro unit, whether it be a Hyper Bloom or a Quick Bloom team, or the good old National Freeze, or even just straight up regular Nuvolet Hyper Carry. Overall, I think Nuvolet is easily one of the best unit slash DPS in the game right now, and I personally don't see Hoyo creating another unit or another character that can be as good as he is because if they do I think everyone's gonna pull for that character and the next thing you know people are gonna be running Abyss with Nuvolet one half and this other character on the other half. Regardless that's enough about our resident water dragon let's move on to our Inazuman poet Kazuha. So Kazuha is a 5-star Animo support unit who has the ability to group enemies and he happens to be one of the best support characters in the game right now. So his elemental skill basically makes him leap up in the air and while he does so, he actually pulls nearby enemies together doing some form of grouping. Of course, you have the ability to basically punch afterwards of which if you absorb any of the Pyro Hydro Electro Cryo elements, you can actually do additional damage. If you were to tap it, it has a smaller range but shorter cooldown. If you were to hold it, it generates more particles and he has a stronger pull, but of course, longer cooldown. His elemental burst is quite simple. He just unleashes like an AoE cylindrical area, which is similar to the likes of Bensi or Sucrose, where it'll absorb any of the four main elements, doing additional damage and also triggering swirls. Now, the most important part about his kit is his Ascension 4, but we'll go through his Ascension 1 first. So his Ascension 1, if his skill comes into contact with any of the four main elements, it will absorb it and it will deal additional damage based on 200% of his attack of the absorb element. Basically, 
basically when you jump up and plunge down with the skill, it will do more damage that scales of attack based on that absorb element. So his ascension 4 is his bread and butter. So every time Kazuha triggers a swirl reaction, Kazuha will grant a certain percentage of elemental damage bonus based on the element absorbed by the swirl or whatever elemental swirl that he triggers. And for every point of elemental mastery he gains that he has for 8 seconds. And you can actually stack up these buffs, thus creating the whole term of double swirl where essentially you do certain things and you are able to basically swirl two different elements thus buffing two elements in the team. This is relatively popular for the likes of like the Hu Tao Kazuha swirl team or the best example is probably Tartalia International. And keep in mind that this passive can be triggered off field. So if you do have your burst up and your burst actually absorbs say Hydro, so for that 8 seconds that your burst is going to be up, or at least for 16 seconds technically, you can technically gain like Hydro bonus for as long as the rotation lasts. Now if you were to go over his constellation, his C1 decreases his skill cooldown by like 10%, and if you use your burst, it resets the cooldown of his skill. This is mostly usable in Hyper, Anemo, Carried, Kazuha, whatever the hell you want to call it, because 10% is a very minor amount, and it's not really going to change the way you play Kazuha. You could technically do like skill burst into skill, because you can get that extra power particle if you do need a bit of ER because I think C1 is pretty good at helping Kazuha get this burst reliably however that is at the cost of exchanging on field time which you could use which you could spend on your actual DPS or other characters so it's very very situational personally I don't really use C1 that much even though I don't have it because one of my viewers actually has a C1 Kazuha and I always forget that he has C1 so it's not really that useful C2 is the one that really makes him probably the best one of the best spots in the game basically whenever burst is up you increase Kazuha EM by 200 for that duration. It also increases the elemental mastery of any characters within his burst by 200. It doesn't stack with other abilities like Sucrose that can actually buff EM. However, this constellation makes him better than the C6 Sucrose. Because not only does the EM buff Kazuha's EM, which means his elemental damage bonus buffing becomes even better, if the character on field is a DPS or character, like, let's, say, let's say like your character on field is an on field DPS where they do vape or melt or whatnot, their reaction damage can be buff thanks to the elemental mastery buff. C3 adds 3 levels to the skill, minor damage increase. C4, when every time Kazuha's energy is lower than 45, he has these following effects. Pressing or holding will regenerate a flat 3-4 to four energy to Kazuha respectively, and when gliding, Kazuha will regenerate 2 energy per second. Now, C4 is mostly just to reduce the amount of um, his energy requirements. The first part is relatively good. The second part is not really that useful unless you probably intentionally glide in the air in the, in the abyss, or mostly it's an overworld part of the constellation but regardless the decrease in energy requirement is quite useful for him thus allowing you to build for more em or more offensive stats c5 adds three levels to the burst very minor damage increase c6 is the part where he gains any more infusion he gains any more infusion for five seconds every time he uses any one of his abilities and for every point of em he has it will increase the damage done by kazuha's normal charge or plunging attack this you can technically use it more towards like a dps kazuha but honestly by the time you reach this point it's not really gonna change the way you play him because Kazuha is mostly made for support you can definitely run him as an on-field DPS with your C6 Faruzan or whatnot or maybe even with like a Shen Yun Purina team but you could also do the same for everyone else and I personally much rather use the skill burst combo for Kazuha so I think even if I get a chance to get C6 I wouldn't actually be using it so what do I think of Kazuha overall I, I already said what I said he's one of the best supports in the game we all know this by now let's not pretend like this isn't a thing like we he's, he's one of the best supports in the game especially useful for like any pyro Hydro, Electro, Cryo characters. You want to run High Ride and Hyper Carry, you use Kazuha. You want to run Child International, that is basically the Kazuha variant, which is much easier to use. You want to run any sort of team that requires a consistent grouping with low an ability with low cooldown that doesn't rely on you on having Venti. Kazuha is just the way to go. His skill being a readily available grouping ability with that much effectiveness makes it feel like it, it, this is like illegal like we shouldn't have a grouper this good while you may say that venti is probably one of the best grouper it's hard for venti to trigger viridescent venera and even double swirl in the first place unless you extend his rotation and even then like keep in mind the viridescent venera four piece set right the effect doesn't actually trigger off field unlike kazuha's abilities so that's why kazuha and sucrose is probably the two better support grouping units in the game mostly because they can do it on field and do a decent amount of grouping. And I would argue that Kazuha is just much better than Sucrose, mostly because he is that ideal support. While Sucrose, you can definitely do, you can use her as a driver, you can definitely stay on the field for the grouping. I think the way her grouping works with her burst and her skill just feels a bit too weak to make her 
really better than Kazuha even at C6 compared to a C0 Kazuha. Like, if you were to ask me to choose between the two, I would easily choose Kazuha any day of the week because I want to play the game and I want to make my life easy. And if I'm able to press buttons and gain maximum effectiveness compared to running another unit, which requires you to understand why Einstein created that uh, theory of relativity to understand how to play the game, then I would probably rather take the easy way out. So in terms of everything else, honestly, there's not really much for me to say about him. I've tried him in like a Nemo carry team and because of his grouping and the fact that I use like say like C6 Farazan, I don't think I've even tried a C6 Farazan with Kazuha yet but I know the damage is going to be absolutely insane so that's like running with Sax Ward and all the different buffers with like Bennett or whatnot and even in other teams like say I think Ayaka Freeze right Ayaka with Shen He with like Okomi like the most premium freeze team Kazuha's grouping has been super reliable and it's been really helpful for any unit like Ayaka that can take advantage of that grouping whether you want to use him to buff your hyper carries damage or or grouping, most of the time you're probably going to be using it for both, he is able to deliver that role by consolidating multiple of them at once. So regardless of which character you want to use it on, as long as you're not running a mono, well mono or Nemo it can work, but mono Geo, as long as you're not running mono Geo to be honest, or like a Dendro team where your Electro application, a Quicken team where your Electro application is just not that strong, Kazuha can work in virtually almost any single situation and if you ask me, I really cannot think of a single team where Kazuha is not useful. Even like, we talked about Nuvolet Furina just now, and one of Nuvolet's and Furina's best support is actually Kazuha because his skill actually groups up the source water droplets, so it's much easier for you to pull them together, and the fact that he can basically swirl Hydro within, in less than like 2 seconds just makes him that good. Yeah, honestly, I don't really have much to say about Kazuha. If you don't have Kazuha, I would actually recommend pulling for him, especially if you really want to elevate the ceiling of your DPS characters, whether it be an off-field DPS like Fischl, or Yai Miko, or an on-field DPS like Keqing, or freaking Diluc, heck, freaking Hu Tao. I'm trying to look at the, the names here. Hu Tao, Ayaka, Ganyu, Melt, even. Honestly, any non-Geo teams will be able to benefit from Kazuha. Other than that, I think both units on this half is just absolutely amazing. I think this is probably one of the best banners. As for the banner review, I might get it out before or after this video comes out, but I'll try to get this out as fast as I can with minimal editing. But other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who are you guys pulling? Because I know a majority of people, at least from what I've seen from different polls from different YouTubers, a lot of people are skipping for either Nuvillet because he's super strong and super good, Kazuha because he's also super strong and super good, or maybe Arlequino because, because everyone's down bad. Honestly, regardless of which character you pull, I think this banner is just very straight up solid for the five stars you're going for because both of those units are meta as heck they're really good they're really satisfying and i can guarantee you as someone who has tried both i have kazuha but i don't have nuvillet but i've tried nuvillet on my viewers account i can guarantee you both units will satisfy your cravings for good gameplay and a hecking lot of fun especially nuvillet whenever his charge attack does the base drop that's honestly my favorite part about nuvillet other than that that's it for now and uh once again leave your comments down below on whether you are uh, pulling for any of these characters or you're skipping for the likes of Alec. Kino. Other than that, I think that is it for now. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. As usual, if you enjoyed or you found this informational, subscribe for more of this kind of content. And yeah, that, that's about it. And I wish you the best of luck in your summons, which is literally happening in less than a week. And this is Ethereal, signing off.